to our ever active participants, supportive attendees, and knowledge seekers, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Greeting you all wherever in the world you may be watching us. Though we are far and uh, we are from different parts of the world, this webinar is going to unite us all with the same goal, learning together. So I'd like to welcome you all to the Institute of Global Professionals free international webinar. I am your host for today's learning session, Mr. Paul Martin de Vera. I am a licensed high school teacher from TV Agro Industrial School, a technical vocational secondary school of the Department of Education, Schools Division of Albay, and a college instructor at Our Lady of Salvation College. Greeting you all mabuhay from the Philippines. I hope that you are all doing well, safe, and healthy, despite the challenges brought about by the present pandemic. And I'm very proud to be associated with IGP as a global member. I feel honored and privileged to host this webinar. It is my delight to welcome you all to our free international webinar. At the Institute of Global Professionals, we believe that power is gained by sharing knowledge and embracing the opportunity to learn, unlearn, and relearn. So thank you all for taking the time out of your busy day to learn with us, and uh, please stay with us until the end. Please know that you can like and comment at any time in our webinar. Don't forget to share our live webinar. You may tag and mention your friends and colleagues in the comment box. And let us watch together and learn together and I hope that all of you will be associated with IGP as well as a global member, just like myself. Please continue being with us in all of our webinars. Check in on the IGP page, recommend IGP, and mention your friends and coworkers. Every day we welcome new participants from all over the world to our webinar. So before we start, let me give you a brief background of the IGP. So the IGP, or the Institute of Global Professionals, is an international institution and a leader in online skills development that serves students and community resource, provides holistic social work and education to create competent and proficient leaders and professionals. Our mission is to empower people and enhance effective training and consultation all over the world. We organize our webinars, online and offline trainings and courses with the guidance and support from only the best and well-trained coaches and speakers to create the best learning platform for all of you. So we expect that uh, all of our webinars will help you in your professional growth and we wish that all of you will stay with us until the end of the session. Let me remind you again to please share our webinar and tag and mention your friends, your co-workers, or anyone that you know who will benefit from our webinar today. So please tag, you may mention your friends, co-workers in the comment box. Your support and encouragement will help us to continuously provide you with quality learning sessions. And for the e-certificate, please don't forget to enroll to this webinar. Just look for the topic, Redefining Education, on eduigp.com and click Enroll. Or you may look for the link found on our Facebook post for this webinar. Now, during the live webinar, the code will be shared to all of our active participants who are going to stay with us until the end of the session. ISO verified e-certificate. Let me repeat, an ISO verified e-certificate will be provided to all active participants. Again, we will share the code with you during our live webinar, so please stay with us until the end of the session. Today, we at IGP are very much delighted and honored to present to you our 168th webinar entitled Redefining Education. 
And joining us today is our resource speaker from one of my dream countries to visit someday, India. It is my honor to introduce and welcome our speaker for today's webinar. She is the regional director of Z Schools, and she is going to talk to us about how we can redefine education by sharing with us the important or the importance of values in education and the topic that I am very much excited about, vocational education. As a teacher at a, at a technical vocational secondary school, I am really looking forward to learning from her discussion. So my dear participants, let us all give our warm welcome to Mrs. Jesvinder Sethi. Namaste, Mrs. Sethi. I am Jaswinder Sethi. I'm working as a regional schools director, not soon. And I would just like to acquaint everyone that I have been into education sector since last 28 years, worked as a principal, and uh, from last three and a half years working as a regional schools director, taking care of North Zone of India. And along with that, during my part time, I am working as a uh, president for one of the NGOs, which is known as Roshni Women Welfare Society, where we are taking care of education of underprivileged children, imparting education uh, to the teachers. We are uh, looking for the many substantial development goals, uh, taking care or spreading awareness program for environment. Uh, such programs are uh, what we are focusing under uh, Roshni Women Welfare Society. But being an educationist, I have always thought what I can give back to the society is one part of my life. I believe that if uh, we really want to live, if uh, the best way to find yourself is to find in service of the others. And I really uh, just live with this, that our motive as an educationist is to create good human beings. I think that is only the uh, purpose of education anywhere in the world. So the current uh, topic what has been given is redefining education. We all know that since last one and a half year because of the COVID situation, we all are suffering. People have uh, lost, they have losses which were irreparable and because of that the main industry which has really suffered was the education department our children really had suffered a lot because there were many losses i mean even in the education sector when the teachers were not used to of virtual classes they were unaware of certain applications how they need to connect even staying at distant places there was a dire need that the education sector uh, the education was thought to be redefined i would rather say that redesigning took place and the mode of instruction for the teachers was technology which they utilized and at least i would say this offline education which was full of life which really it was it is of course it cannot never substitute teachers or the classroom teaching but to some extent it did engage the children it did engage the parents and the children were taught by the teachers staying at and at the same time i would say that this particular situation all across the world did compulsive made it every it made it compulsory for everyone to rethink how we really need to redesign our our education if i say redesigning of teaching and learning because the pedagogy has really really changed and just with the change of that shift we all should understand that it is a serious concern because in case you want to make a change in the society the schools or the org educational organizations are the right place to make a change 
for that as we all know that the education is a tri process where parents teachers and the students they are equally important and they play a vital role in upbringing of a child there the parents yes, who were at the back and the teachers hello, were more active in the school scenario making <laughs> hello ma'am students ma grow academically yes hello, yes ma sir ma'am uh, i think you yes, forgot sir. to share yes, your sir. screen I'm no no i am not sharing the screen yet i will screen oh, i will okay. share when i am uh, at vocational education i'll be sharing then as well. <laughs> okay okay ma'am okay okay, okay. i have it said because okay. this is with me talking right now <laughs> yeah yeah sure so yeah so uh, what what i was actually saying is that uh, uh, education is a tri process where parents teachers and the student itself play a vital role in the growth of the child we when we are teaching ch children virtually or offline we must consider that the parents are not simply parents who have given the responsibility of their child to us in the school but they are actually the builders in this virtual scenario when the world has changed we need to rethink and change our strategies of teaching where we need to consider our parents as the real managers who will support the educationists the schools the colleges to upbring the child and to educate the child they are the real administrators who will really support and help the teachers to tackle this situation the new strategies where we say that the offline is very uh, very difficult for the teachers and the students to connect but at the same time i would say that offline has really given an opportunity to understand ourselves to understand our families to understand and give time to the environment it has given us time so that we can understand what we really want from ourselves what are our interests and accordingly we can move ahead and we can make use of resources whatever is available so even in the schools or uh in the current scenario i would say that we need to value schools because schools are only actually the place which cannot and never be substituted by the technology for that i would say that we need to be committed towards our work we need that we should not tell uh, instead of telling our teachers to what they need to or how they need to educate and give orientations in but they need to be educational managers and they need to accept the challenges what at present they are facing and make the best use of their resources i would say that there is a dire need to redesign and rethink our pedagogy which is again very very important that we there must be a shift from the conventional or the traditional to the new mode there is a dire need that we need to move from the traditional theoretical teaching to the activity based or the practical teaching of our students there is a need that where we must engage our children in experiential learning i think it is a time where we need to encourage and our teaching should be full of vigor and where we can make use of cooperation and cooperative thinking which will definitely uh, re we need to re visualize our teaching and learning processes which will really ban benefit our children that how they can make use even sitting at distant places or even if they are going partially to the schools and how they can make the best the use of the time and the resources to uh, make use and so that they can grow and uh, achieve their dreams whatever they have in their mind i would say that there is a need where we need to think of mature time we need to think of the right time we need to think of the more time we need to feel that this is the time which can be utilized at the best and we can do the concept conceptual learning teaching could be made with the help of cooperation and it should be it it can be made in the real scenario in the real 
a live situation if the learning will be there then you will all agree to it that the whatever it is whatever learning the child is doing it is going to be permanent and it will have a lifelong impression on him and moreover in today's scenario the shift is it's a life centric learning in today's scenario what more is important is the survival education is important but at the same time we must understand that there are four pillars which is learning to be learning to give and learning to share these are the four pillars and how we orient our uh, learning that is very important so learning to be is again a very very important pillar of education system where we are teaching our children that whatever we have learned along with their own creativity enhancing their thinking skills they can the best way of making use of the education or the knowledge they are having is that they need to learn how to be because then they will be a person with control senses along with that i would say that it is very very important to consider a teacher as a goal setter because if a teacher will consider herself or uh, himself as a goal setter i think he or she can be a game changer and when one to be a goal setter the teachers at present if they want their teaching to be very very impressive very influential then there is a need that the teachers should consider they should agree to the point that there has been a shift where there is not only classroom teaching but the technology is playing a vital role so what they need to do is they need to strengthen their technic technology skills because if they are well versed they are techno savvy i think they will be able to deliver whatever they think should they want to give to the students they need to brush up their pedagogy because i said that there has been a, a change in the pedagogy and where it was earlier we were focusing on the product at the earlier stage but now we are focusing on the process where we are focusing on the process and the education imparted in the organizations is the gentle child centric there even the teachers who are the goal setters need to brush up their pedagogies they need to improve their classroom teaching they need to improve their classroom management because now classrooms are not only traditional classrooms but they are virtual classrooms too they need to get more active they need to adjust their mindset they need to teach the children with certain learning outcomes and you will all agree to it that their presentations need to be checked again and again before they present in front of the students because students are students and they imitate their role models who are of course the teachers themselves and moreover you all will agree to the fact that in this change scenario the teachers need to organize themselves whatever they want to deliver they need to organize themselves means they need to have control over themselves they need to plan before going to the classroom situation they need to be more organized and more oriented they need to be they need to have certain learning outcomes whenever they are presenting in front of the students so uh, this is what i feel and at at uh, right now i would we i would just want you to understand that whenever education is being delivered to the students it it is moving around the student of course yes but at the same time it it is the knowledge it is the skills and it is the values which we are imparting to the students and all these three parameter sorry all these three parameters are very very important when we say that we are imparting value education to the students this means that we need to make our children a good human being we need to prepare our children a good citizen i we need our children to be to have 21st century skills they need to have 
critical thinking they need to have communication skills they need to have uh, they need to have to uh, be in habit of working in cooperation with others that means they need to work in in teams moreover when we talk about value education they need to own the responsibility which is again very very important and when i say they need to own the responsibility means they need to understand the others also they need to understand the other citizens in the uh, society itself they need to have share and care which is very important in today's scenario they need to understand and do their best when one is doing the best from their side i think you are never burdened you never have a sleepless night because whenever you are putting the best you are you can as per your potential uh, as per your capabilities i think you always do the best and you have you you are always a, a very important and very productive member of the society we need to teach our children to respect others irrespect of uh, the age caste creed race, racism anything it, just we should we should uh, teach them that there is a dire need that they should respect everyone every citizen every individual because every after all if our life is important it is life of others also which is important we should respect the freedom of others we should uh, also know that if we are respecting the freedom of others or if we are respecting the freedom of ours we should know that we have certain duties to fulfill we need to have the value of honesty we need to have trust because it is a life where uh, there is lot of uh, 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 the life is always uncertain and if we do not trust one another life will become very very difficult so uh, this value of understanding others trusting honesty is again very important but at the same time in this changed scenario of the world we need to teach our children the value of reuse and recycle i mean to say we need to teach them environment awareness also because if it is there we will understand that why there is a dire need to reuse and recycle we need to make them understand forgiveness because to forget and to forgive is the real way or that is the essence of life and to lead a happy life and a satisfied and contented life so i think these are certain important values which we need to inculcate in our students through our education and something more which is very important is that these value educations can be inculcated within our children through role plays through storytelling through use of technology through showing them certain pictures videos cartoons in the form of uh, these short films when we are showing to the students it's not only the communication skill or the uh, language which we the children will understand but apart from this they will learn certain moral values also and i think uh, this is very very important when i talk about the skills which i think it is very very important for us till date you all will agree that uh, we were imparting theoretical knowledge to the students which was which was uh, far away from the practical knowledge this was one reason which was a cause of unemployment and now the whole world is thinking of certain courses certain skills vocational courses i mean which are very important for the upbringing and if you really want that your children should be successful in their life it is only the skills skills like open mindedness skills like growth mindset skills like authenticity skills like aesthetic to value aesthetic sense 
so all these compassion being compassionate all these values and skills are the skills which which enhance the person to have a successful life because it is not only the academics which will help the student which will help the student to be successful in their life but you all will agree that this is the skills which help the children to be successful in their life even after their schools so what i want to emphasize is as i have just mentioned that there is a paradigm shift in approach and pedagogy in the schools so when there is a shift i mean there is a shift from the learner autonomy it fits with overall pedagogy because the emphasis is on the role of the learner rather than it is on the process so which is very important for us to understand that our sole purpose is to develop their the develop the purpose of learning and to see learning as a lifelong process we have to inculcate this value in our children that they need to be a lifelong learners and for this i would highlight few points which will definitely if we inculcate these in and in each and every student they will definitely have a successful life they need to be a learner with autonomy cooperation learning curricular integration focus on meaning diversity thinking skills alternative assessment teachers as co learners if we focus on these aspects i think any child in the whole world they will be successful just to share that we all know that we we are talking more about the vocation vocation itself means an individual development of talents and abilities in the choice and enjoyment of a career god has created each individual with certain potentials and certain talents and those potentials and those interests the teacher needs to see accordingly and groom the child our sole purpose of any academician is to nurture that child according to his interests and according to their potential when you have seen their potential we need to educate those children within vocational schools that prepare people for specific trade it directly develops expertise in techniques related to technology skill and scientific technique to span all aspects of the trade for this when once you have understood that what skills uh, the child is interested in at, at that point of time that uh, children or the student they can whatever they are interested in those skills can be taken up and they can once those skills are developed in a child he has he becomes an expert then he or she can take up different careers like healthcare graphic food technology cosmetology uh, plumbing air conditioning uh, computer designing food preservation telecommunication then uh, hair courses which which we uh, then catering management beauty culture food preservation clinical clinical management event management so these are certain uh, courses which require a certain kind of skill and once uh, the child uh, get trains in these skills he can directly choose that uh, particular uh, uh, profession and he can start earning also because at the end what i believe is that for any every education is not only to give degrees or diplomas but it is that the child needs to make his her living at the end and only that living is going to make him or her happy so this there are various uh, terminologies which is being utilized in different uh, countries uh, for this vocational education for example in european union they make use of vocational educational and training then unesco calls it as technical and vocational education and training australia says it technical and further education vocational and technical education 
United Kingdom calls it as further education and USA says it as career and technical education. So one thing which is very, very important is that you all will agree to it that many a times these vocational courses, although many a, many a times the students have taken these courses, but, but they hardly, uh, they have uh, not taken it up and because maybe that they do not uh, they do not appreciate in taking a blue collar job uh, and then they continue their academic uh, uh, academic courses further and this is one reason that there has been a vocational school fallacy also so i will be talking a bit later but then now i will be uh, discussing what is the objective of The educational education is the preparation of an individual who can think critically and creatively and act as informed professional and citizen. Whatever knowledge has been imparted to the uh, candidate uh, in school timings, in his uh, academy or in his organization, wherever he has uh, taken his uh, vocational course, Ultimately, he has to assimilate all that knowledge, make use of his creativity and then utilize it in his profession, in his in the society and make his contribution to the society. Then is to develop their aesthetic awareness. You all know that this world is very, very beautiful. When the world is very beautiful, we, as I was talking, that that aesthetic sense has to be inculcated even in the schools, in each and every child. Why? Because we have forgotten to appreciate. We need to appreciate the natural things which have been created by the God itself. We also need to inculcate this skill in all the students so that they know to how to appreciate the beautiful things which have been man created also so when you appreciate when you have that critical uh, analysis you know how to do that critical analysis you will agree that you will uh, your mindset will be positive and once you have that positive mindset nobody will stop you to grow in your life you need to acquire knowledge and skill enable them to adopt and apply them to any environment this is again as i was talking that to have a positive mindset along with that you also need to have a skill of adaptability once you are adapted to any kind of environment then you are also you will be able to apply your knowledge and the skill to any environment in any sphere of the world in any corner of the world you go you will be successful and one more which is the objective of vocational education or if i say even the education is that you have to have a lifelong quest for learning unless and until you do not have that thirst for learning your learning if there is a chances that whatever you know that you will be that you will achieve stagnation and the, you can know that if you are once stagnant and that will lead to your downfall because every day there is a new invention every day technology is changed every day the mindset is being changed and unless and until we do not have this quest of learning we will we cannot be at par with the requirement of the market we cannot be at par with the demand of the students and if we have this lifelong quest we will definitely upgrading updating ourselves with the latest knowledge which is required for our profession or our skills whatever we are in and we will be successful in life there is there are challenges when we say uh, that uh, uh, we should encourage students for vocational education so why i am saying that there are challenges like vocational school fallacy so why there is a, a vocational school fallacy the reason is there is a social mindset Although we need to have these vocational trainings, these skills to be successful, but the scenario all across have been such that the mindset of 
the people have always looked it down because they have attached it to this they have given it as a status a symbol and it they have not given much importance to the vocational education now this vocational education has two sides one is the demand and the other is the supply when we say the when we are saying about the demand that is associated with the status and the importance of the vocational education so this is the demand side and very little of the priority and low positioning has been given uh, to the vocational courses when we are comparing it with the other streams of education so at the same time this has become the main issue for the supplying side uh, which i would say which is uh, which is inadequate or logistic uh, because of the equipment and lack of trained vocational teachers and because uh, they have not taken up that and there was a uh, less demand of uh, the vocational trained people because uh, there was a uh, scarcity of trained vocational teachers also and there was lack of weightage given to the students from this stream this vocational stream in admission to higher education so uh, once you have taken up uh, this is a big challenge uh, of demand and supply or the tagging up of uh, the social uh, status to it or uh, the priorities have been different i think this is the biggest challenge which we really are facing or the people who are into vocational education they are uh, they are facing it so when i say that there is uh, this uh, uh, vocational school fallacy which is associated to all these it is basically a, a situation where the this vocationally trained students they do not opt this blue collar jobs instead they again prefer to educate them uh, for uh, academic education for their higher education they join some other organizations and uh, they opt uh, uh, other jobs and the demand for these uh, students is less in the society there is still a belief among the policy makers also that vocationalization of education is one of the effective ways to develop and manage the skilled workforce in labor intensive economies like india and uh, for that nep 2020 uh, reforms the uh, faith in it but at the same time i would also say that the challenge uh, along with this vocational school fallacy social mindset or the uh, status symbol is the budgetary allocation and capacity of vocational institute and administrators as i said that the budget uh, in previous years we have seen that very less budget was allocated for vocational training and there were very less of vocational institutes also and we did not have uh, experts or the trained uh, teachers also for these institutes so when i uh, so uh, why there is a need of vocational education so number one is the reduction in unemployment so as we know that uh, we may have we may have higher education we may have done ma's in any of the stream maybe science arts commerce any humanities anything but we have not developed any skill and for that there is lot of unemployment and if we really want to reduce this unemployment we need to uh, we need to educate our children through vocational education only world class the creation of smes and why there is a need for vocational education if we want to have small medium enterprises we need to create those uh, these small medium and uh, uh, enterprises so that uh, this employment is generated world class productivity and quality so with the help once you develop a skill and those skills will be not only i would say they will not only be uh, recognized in india but all across the world that skills are only are in demand and uh, uh, believe me that in case we are able to uh, produce children with the students with a certain kind of skills 
i think there will be a huge demand uh, at the world level also so export and tourism surge is again uh, which will be a beneficial thing if we are educated it is it will definitely increase the gdp and per capita advantage will also be there just to acquaint each one of you that uh, where uh, uh, where the whole world is thinking of vocational education cbsc uh, in, is also introducing certain courses right from 6 onwards till uh, grade 12 so like artificial intelligence beauty and wellness design thinking information technology marketing commercial applications mass media travel and tourism then for 9th and 10th retail uh, information technology security automotive automotive introduction to financial markets introduction to tourism beauty wellness agriculture food for, for production from offline operations breaking banking and insurance marketing and sales healthcare april and so multimedia uh, and so on uh, but even for uh, the grade the 11th and 12th the newly which apart from this the new courses uh, vocational courses which have been inculcated are the artificial intelligence then we have uh, design thinking which is again very important because you all know that everything uh, the, this universe is again it has a design and whatever has been created it has a specific pattern to it so uh, maybe this is one reason that design thinking has been offered by cbsc itself along with artificial intelligence and then physical fitness is again another which is being imparted so what i want to emphasize is that vocational education and uh, the nep 2020 which is uh, considering which is considering this I, uh, there are certain maybe uh, this is one reason that why Uh, cbsc is also considering it because uh, they want that the vision for balanced education as i said that only academic no uh, theoretical knowledge without practical or pragmatic knowledge without the development of this skill unemployment has been generated it, it has only resulted for unemployment but if we really want our uh, children to have a uh, employment at a later stage because so then they need to understand themselves and there has to be a vision for balanced education uh, an education which should be socially meaningful and aspirational so for that cbsc has uh, 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 separate it has no hard separation between art and science uh, between curricular and extracurricular activities between vocational and academic streams so that it wants to eliminate the harmful hierarchies among and silos between different areas of learning then uh, reimagine reimagination of vocational education and sensitization sensitization of building competences so as you all know that vocational education is perceived to be inferior to mainstream education and meant largely for students who are unable to cope up with the later this is a perception that affects uh, the choices students make it is a serious concern that can be dealt with by complete reimagination of how vocational education is offered to students in the future so uh, this is only the reason uh, that why the students were were uh, there why there was a vocational school fallacy because when something which is considered as a down a low standard it was but obvious that the parents who are conscious of the status in the society they were not ready to encourage their children for vocational education then inclusive interoperable interdisciplinary and outcome based education which is very very important the fourth vertical of higher education commission of india uh, is considered to be uh, the vocational education and for that a higher a national higher education qualification framework is being formulated and this vocational vocational courses or vocational skills are going to be integrated in the education system for higher education and i just have shown you the list 
and i would say that it has been done and uh, continuous work is being done by the cbsc itself for 21st century capacity building which is very very important if we want our children to be uh, to be globally competent there is a dire need for 21st century capacity building for that holistic and multidisciplinary education has to be there for the holistic or well rounded individuals that possess 21st century capabilities in the fields of art humanities languages science social science professional technicals vocational fields ethic of social engagement soft skills as communication discuss and discussion and debate rigorous specialization in a chosen field or in the chosen field or the fields you would all agree uh, to this point why because uh, whenever uh, as an adult or wherever uh, as the teachers or the faculty goes for an interview after uh, being interviewed for their subject the last question most probably is that apart from this academics or the subject knowledge what else can you deliver to the students because everybody has become so aware that along with the academic knowledge we also need to focus on the 21st century capacity building of our students school internships for school appreciation and craft centric learning which is a very important and valid point that in case unless and until the students from 6th grade we uh, they are not given a chance of surveys and hand on experiences uh, or important vocational crafts i think uh, it is very very difficult that uh, any educational organization would now be successful and for that certain uh, internships should also be engaged by the uh, schools or the educational organizations and for the skills which or the crafts which i am focusing is like small where the children can understand easily and they are they need not to spend much or the schools need not to spend much on it but whatever is available or what can easily be made available those skills should be inculcated within the children like carpentry electric work metal work gardening pottery making etc Uh, which you will all agree that in all states local communities these are to be mapped by local skilling needs so if we if we uh, do focus on the local skills also which are available in the uh, in the area i think they, they we can definitely take help of the communities also professional development of the teachers which is again very very important because uh, as i said that the life long learning is something which uh, we are not only we need to uh, inculcate within our children but even the teachers will have to continuously update and upgrade themselves and have to have capacity building also they need to develop professionally also they should know that what is the demand of the children now and what will be the future of the society in next 5 to 10 years because you cannot predict in this present scenario when we are all going through a very tough time where uh, it's very difficult to predict right now but at least something like we immediately when the pandemic was announced we immediately shifted to the mode of technology and we started uh, uh, teaching our uh, student we connected our student and uh, certain skills were being developed similarly the teachers or the faculty members there is a dire need that they also need to professionally develop themselves and for their and for that capacity building programs ncert scert uh, cbsc at its own level everybody is trying hard for this development there has to be integration of vocational education with academic learning and formation of ncive when i say n so uh, uh, what what i want to say here is that there where earlier it was considered that the vocational uh, courses were considered as uh, uh, low standard now when it will be interwoven when it will be integrated 
I, I, I would uh, say that with integrating the vocational courses with the academic learning, there will be integration of not only of the vocation, uh, vocational skills, but there will be an integration of uh, other subjects. It will be interdisciplinary also. It will also be art integrated because there are certain skills that, uh, which require certain art, creativity and innovation, uh, which will lead them to it. Then there is a job market orientation with multiple entry and exit options. So CBSE has taken it into consideration that even undergraduate degree, there will be three or four years duration with multiple exit options within this period with appropriate certification. A certificate yeah, like it was earlier that if you, uh, there was a three year degree course. Now it will be three or four years. And if you complete one year degree course, then you will be given a certificate. If you do uh, with including vocational and professional areas, a diploma after two years will be given to you. And with that, if you are doing three years or four years uh, degree course, then a degree will be given to you. So this job market orientation with multiple entries is also possible. Uh, CBSE is making or the authorities are making it possible. And they are doing an excellent work by inter uh, integration of this vocational skills or education in their normal routine a recognition of prior learning and alignment with international standards so this national skill qualification framework will be detailed uh, for each discipline vocation and profession and i am very happy that it has been aligned with international standard classification of occupations maintained by international labor organizations then technological development and student entrepreneurship. This is very, very important. As I said, the purpose of any education is not to get a government job. But I think the purpose of any education is to create good human beings with 21st century skills and who are successful not only in their uh, schools or colleges, but they are also successful in their life and it is only possible when they get certain good jobs and when you are cre creating entrepreneurs when you are creating entrepreneurs i would say you will all agree to it that creating entrepreneurs with the help of educa vocational education means that you are creating people individuals who are problem solvers you are creating people or individuals who are decision makers you are creating people who are ready to work in a team. They are people who are able to manage their resources. They are able to manage their finances. They are people who know how to make the resources available. They are, they are good decision masters. They know how to lead others. They know how to manage their finances. They are, uh, they have that mind growth, the mindset. They have that growth mindset, I would say. They are the people who know that what is their uh, goal in their life and whatever they want to do, they know how to make use of it at the right time. So any decision which is, if they are capable, they are risk takers, they are game changers. So in case when you are uh, giving this entrepreneurial knowledge to the students, I think you are creating leaders. And once you have created those leaders, you need not to, uh, one need not to think much about it. Uh, they will definitely be able to make, they will able to survive in this change scenario also. So uh, what are the actual uh, problems? I would also emphasize on this in present vocational education and training, although I have uh, said much about it, but then uh, the basic problem areas are the high dropout rate of secondary education. Enrollment in 11th and 12th grade of vocational education. These are the problems. Employers want employees with good academic skills, not just vocational skills. So uh, this is again the reason that why children are not or the, stu or the students are not ready to uh, have blue collar job. They want a white collar job because the employers 
they want that someone who is good at academics also they want that academic skills also in there so uh, they instead of taking those vocational educations and uh, get a job they go for higher education private and industry participation is lacking so we need to have certain uh, uh, certain uh, industry certain uh, uh, i would say centers um, that may be private or that may be industry participating where internship should be there and once the student who has done his internship from those centers i think that certificate and that hand on experience would lead him to get a better job where certain communication skills can definitely be looked at present regulations are very very rigid so uh, uh, which we that's again a problem lack of experience and trained teachers because uh, somebody who is not convinced only uh, with the having that vocational education or with that skill will definitely not create people who with conviction will go for those jobs created so uh, that lack of experience and trained teachers are one of the hurdles so vocationalization at all levels is not possible but i salute our uh, indian government who has taken this initiative and the cbse 2 uh, that from right from sixth standard from uh, in school level uh, this vocationalization uh, will be soon taken up by all schools no clear policy of vocation vocational education is there but uh, yes the government is definitely in this uh, whatever is been shown in nap 2020 we see that the government is working on these lines too there are uh, vocational uh, schools available uh, this is again a problem i would say uh, but many high schools offer basic vocational education such as home economics wood shop and auto repair vocational education institution vary vary by state but most post secondary vocational instructions is offered by private career schools other institutions offering vocational courses including two year community colleges state owned institute of technology and government operated adult educational centers are there then uh, in india i would say there are certain agencies who are involved in technical and vocational education they are national skill development council ministry of human resource development department of school education and literacy department of higher education ministry of labor and employment directorate journal of employment and training there are some other 20 central ministry and development which have running some small of this vocational uh, to deliver this vocational education or skills uh, to the students who really need it vocational education i have just mentioned regarding the 1920 uh, 20 that all these things are taken into consideration increase employability they had already marked and they have understood that with this vocational education uh, the employability will be increasing policy and sages efforts to provide higher secondary school students with vocational courses in 2009 it was the same proposed following features competency based qualification certification for learning achievement national qualification avoidance of overlapping of qualification modular character quality assurance regime lifelong learning open flexible system and now what i have just mentioned before that what nep 2020 uh, there has been a shift where uh, all these uh, things maybe it was a very gradual process and uh, just the revised version of uh, national education policy has given lot of priority to na this uh, na skill development and vocational education in the uh, mainstream in the uh, along with the academic education there will be integration of vocational education right from 6th grade which is a great achievement i would uh, say so uh, vocationalization of secondary education i have already uh, talked about it that uh, where uh, after plus 2 stage when vocational education at plus 2 stage they are going to help develop competencies required by a specific or 
uh, for self development employment which i said the entrepreneurship programs will be there the scheme provides for financial assistance to the states to set up administrator structure area vocational surveys preparation of curriculum test books teachers training programs etc uh, uh, many of the things are being going through other vocational educational organizations are being restructured workplace hands on training and exposure are going to be given the 11th and 12th grade students have access to around 160 vocational courses offered in about 6000 schools of the 32 states union territories of the countries and i think this is a big achievement and it is a path towards the employment and skill development of young generation and india is i would say the uh, is a country which has the largest number of, of uh, largest number of individuals grading from uh, age 17 to i would say 40 uh, which is like uh, i think uh, the best part whom if in case we start training or giving vocational uh, skills or education to the uh, youngsters i think uh, many of the problems will be solved the advantage is that uh, these vocational skills are shorter duration they are of less co cost they are giving hands on experience labor market outcome is there i mean uh, learn and earn if i say that why the western countries are successful or the why the developed countries are successful because there is a concept of learn why earn while learning or earn and learn so or learn and earn vice versa i would say uh, because that nothing is they don't have any uh, status symbol they do not think any work to be big or small but at the same time they are learning also they are having their uh, they are increasing their qualification they are pursuing their higher education and they are also earning and making their living and uh in being successful in their life career minded education so with the help of vocational education there is going to be uh, we will be able to develop a career minded education will be given where children will be uh, independently thinking and i think uh, with the advancement of the technology we have already reached to some extent that the mindset of our students have definitely changed this advantages it is very important i would not say it as disadvantages but i would say the area of uh, improvement would be a better term in, instead of saying disadvantages it is the limited flexibility uh, we, they don't have much relaxation uh, on this but uh, the syllabus is very much uh, uh, limited and uh, the teachers are only uh they are only uh, they only only teach what is the syllabus curriculum has been mentioned there so add on cost is there a wrong attitude that attitude that it is a small work people think doing labor is small they do are not ready to take up that review collar job so that is a wrong attitude if you are having a positive attitude of mind you will respect others if you are agree to do any sort of work and uh, in 24 hours if we just look at the people who have been successful i mean if we say uh, president of america if we say prime minister of different countries if we say, say any any big eminent personalities of any of the country i think you will all agree that everybody has got as to me attitude consider all or big attitude towards uh, vocational education is again it is the breadth uh, of institution there are less number of institutions now there are institutions but there is still a breadth of institutions where i think uh, uh, very uh, soon there will be number of institutions because everyone has realized that skill development is the need of the hour we need to definitely 
work on this curriculum where the work has already been started on and suitable and skilled learning should be local i mean the regional language it can be in regional language instead of only english or the national language if the media of instruction in a vocational education can be in as the can be taught in that it would give a better result lack of continuous education so people uh, once if they have uh, got that certificate or a diploma in vocational education they do not continuously if we want to market our uh, jobs to be we will have to have that thirst of knowledge and to update and upgrade ourselves so in what is already in work and i think it is very very important that it I think we uh, just lost uh, Mrs. Sethi, but uh, we'll get back to um, her discussion. Um, and at this point, I just hope that you are still with us. You're still um, watching. So um, can you comment number one if you are still joining us in today's webinar? So, so far, I hope that you have learned something from uh, Mrs. Sethi's discussion on uh, vocational training. So if you're still with us, please comment number one. Friends are still active. They are still watching us from all over the world. All right. So... Once again, I would like to remind all of our dear attendees and uh, participants of this international webinar to please support us by sharing this live. Please tag, comment, and mention your friends and colleagues. And again, just a reminder for you to receive your ISO verified e-certificate for this webinar. Please do not forget to just look for the topic redefining education on eduigp.com and click enroll. And we have with us again, Mrs. Sifi. Go ahead, ma'am. Uh, what I was saying is that uh, uh, CBSE has given us a lot of opportunity that along with the educational uh, education or the skill development, which uh, now from uh, as per the NEP 2020, we see that a lot of uh, uh, subjects are right from, right from 6th grade till 11th grade. Uh, it has been integrated with other academic subjects. And now, doing, now the focus of uh, the education, at least in India, I would say, is on the technical part, on the skill development and the academic. I think it, uh, the mindset of the parents is also changed it will definitely uh, be fruitful for the child because if you want to see your children being successful in your li in their lives then uh, the mindset of the parents need to be changed if any as a parent if i say i would it's just a suggestion from my side that parents grow with their children i mean growing with the children means that whatever is the latest techniques of changing, if they have mat they also have the uh, skill of mat recognition, then they will be growing with their children. And once they start growing with their children, it will not only help their children, but help them to eliminate that generation gap between one generation and the other generation. 
and i think that can start to lead to have a good family bond emotional bond and success for everyone in the uh, family itself and when you are success uh, bond strong in the family i think charity begins at home it it will result into the society also and children will be very much confident with of uh, in the society also they will be always ready to give back uh, to the society so i again at the end i would uh, believe that lot of work at the world level is uh, being done now and uh, indian government is also the educationist academy uh, development because we all know that um, this without skills without vocational qualifications without specific training for a special trade we cannot be successful so if we want our country to be successful we as individuals need to work at the ground level at the root level, that school level and uh, i think that will lead to the success of the nation at the end i would only once again uh, repeat that in case you want to find yourself the best way to to lose yourself in the service of others so once we are having that habit of uh, losing serving uh, losing yourself in the service of others respecting others loving every human beings when we are disciplined when we are punctual i think when we are honest when we have the integrity towards our system towards our organizations i think we succeed not only at work, but at the organization and at national and international level so i think it was i, I really enjoyed my session i hope everybody enjoyed so thank you very much and forward to thank you all right what an insightful learning session that was uh, mississippi uh, we are Hola, very Isabel. much on a to um, have graced by your wonderful and very timely discussion. Thank you. Uh, first on uh, the sudden shift tuning because of the present pandemic. So you were right uh, when you said that as teachers, we should rethink and change our strategies in teaching. And we should not forget that we had very limited time to learn all these technologies and new approaches just so we can ensure that learning must continue. And uh, because of our hard work, resilience, and passion as teachers, I'm sure that everyone will agree with me that our teachers are our modern day heroes. And for those three, uh, the Philippines just celebrated our National Heroes Day last August 30th. And I just would like to take this opportunity to thank and honor our dear teachers and educators all over the world because without you, we will not be who we are today. And uh, let us all remember a very important note that Mississippi emphasized earlier that even though the approach and uh, pedagogy has changed, technology can never substitute or replace our teachers. So we should take pride and uh, yeah, only teachers can teach and incul inculcate to our students the values of hard work respect, awareness, open-mindedness, authenticity, and compassion, which are vital for students to be successful in life. And as I mentioned earlier, I am currently a secondary school teacher at a technical vocational school. So all the learnings from the discussion on vocational education are extremely valuable and help to me teaching more students to try vocational training and education because as what we have learned um, from Mississippi's discussion vocational training and education will allow students to gain practical experience and the society as a whole will have a positive mindset on vocational education if we are just able to integrate vocational education to our current curriculum so we have um, also to help our students to realize that you know fish, uh, finishing or completing a vocational course 
will give them the cord they need to meet the huge demand of technical skills all over the world, as mentioned. And if more students have technical skills and trainings, most likely unemployment and other um, issues uh, will be reduced, resulting to a better economic status. And um, our speaker also emphasized that it is about time to change the social stigma and overall impression on vocational education. Therefore, vocational education, like I mentioned, should be integrated to our current curriculum. Vocational education completers are considered to be well-rounded individuals with 21st century skills. So very insightful presentation indeed, Mrs. Siti, and I am sure that all of our participants have learned a lot from your discussion as well. So again, thank you, uh, Mrs. Javinder Siti, for gracing us uh, with your time and of course with your very insightful and perception changing discussion. So uh, we will go back to our stations. Thank you. With new learnings because of Thank you, you very much. So, my dear, thank you. So my dear participants, let us all send our love and gratitude once again to Mrs. Jasmine Dersethi by giving her a virtual round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. And ho I hope to uh, see you again. Uh, in Thank you, Mr. Future. Paul. Maybe not virtual. Yeah, yeah, sure. You're, sure. <laughs> sure. you're welcome. All right. So um, at this point, I hope that you, you are still tuned in. Webinar. And once again, I would like to remind all of you, our dear attendees and participants of this international webinar, to please support us by sharing this live. Please tag, comment, and mention your friends and co-workers and again for you to receive your iso verified e-certificate for this webinar please don't forget to enroll to this webinar uh, we've been flashing the instructions on your screen now you can go to that our brilliant speaker had already fed our minds that us now assess our learnings from today's webinar and put our game faces on it is time to show our competitive sides because it is now time for quiz competition so we already have our participants on slido.com we have chris nalin akaya jinalin villar resurrection we have diane carla uiy uh, John Paul B. De Luna. All right. So uh, again, go to www.slido.com and our code is IGP quiz. All right. So more and more participants are joining us on slido.com. We have Alex Javier Alvarez and Emily. We have Kathleen Wendy. Jeffrey A. Salem. Again, that's slido.com. Use the code IGP quiz. Just click on the link in the comment box for you to be redirected to slido.com and use the code IGP quiz. We now have Mr. Jonas Malingin, Sheila M. Du. All right, more and more participants are joining us on slido.com. We have Sir Romel Hernandez, Eulalia G. Pocom, 
Alright, so again, that's Lido.com. Use the code IGP quiz. We will begin the quiz shortly. Mr. Alex Allen is already with us on Slido. Mr. Jonathan Amigo just joined us. And we have Maria Fe Guerra. So, all right. So we have Miss Francesca Pundok with us on slido.com so i hope you are all ready to take the quiz again it's time to show everyone our game faces in our competitive sides this will assess our learning from today's webinar mamrudita bautista is already with us on slido Mamruby Lumod has joined Slido as well. So I hope everyone is ready for our quiz. Mamel Rose Sanque is already with us. Again, that's slido.com. You may click the link on the comment box. All right, so for our first question, education, job status, income, community safety are all examples of, so I hope you know the answer to this one. Is it physical environment or social economic, such as social demands of health? Okay, so most of the answers are correct. Social economic, social detriments of health. All right, so I hope you're ready for question number two. Okay, so we have Sir Dennis. Rank one. So education will make it hard for you to get a job. It's only useful for very smart kids or will help you get a job and improve your life. So which one is the correct answer? I hope you know the answer to this one. All right. So most of you answered will help you get a job and improve your life. Let's see. That is the correct answer. So congratulations to everyone who got this question correctly. All right, Sir Dennis is still leading. So in education, question number three, only men should have access to certain aspects of education. Only women, second choice, third choice, men and women should have equal learning opportunities. So which one is the correct answer? All right, let's see. Most everyone answered men and women should have equal learning opportunities, and that is the correct answer. Pretty easy, right? Okay, let's see. Sir Den is still in the leading. Quality education. Obtaining a quality education is the foundation to improving lives, or is it quality education gives access to better jobs and more money? Which one is the correct answer? You have seven seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's see. All right, majority answer. The first one, obtaining a quality education is the foundation. Of course, it's the correct answer to improving lives. So Dennis is still number one. Next question, what year was 
Minecraft education created? Is it 2016 or 2019? You have nine seconds. Let's see. The correct answer. So most of you answered 2016 and that is the correct answer. Oh, and someone is, let's see here. Getting an education is a commandment of God. Is it true or false? So I'm guessing we have a different rank number one now. Let's see. The correct answer is, oh, pretty close. So, yep, 48% answered true, and that is the correct answer. Okay, we have a different rank number one. So why is bilingual education so effective? Because it promotes equal language development. Students are able to continue academic gains, understand, go to faster, or is it all of the above? Let's see. Majority of you answered all of the above. Let's see if it's the correct answer. It is the correct answer. So good job, everyone, to those who answered all of the above. Next question, what research supports bilingual education? We have comparison of bilingual education versus other models. Is it the second choice or is it the third one? You have seven seconds to answer special education or general education teachers and most of you answered comparison of bilingual education and that is the correct answer versus other models good job so we have sir john carlo quality education is good for is it improving health reducing poverty or is it both you have 10 seconds to answer. Six seconds. Two, one, zero. Let's see. So most of you answered both, 96%, and that is the correct answer. So it both improves health and, of course, the money. So all students have access to the general education curriculum is it true or is it false i think all of our participants know the answer to this so we have eight seven seconds six three two one let's see all right majority answered true is it the correct answer it is the correct answer 86 percent so majority got the correct answer Good job so far. So, all right, congratulations to our top 10 quiz competition winners. All right, let's see. So, your names are flashed on the screen. So, we have uh, at rank number one, we have Sir John Carlo. All right, I hope you are using the names or your names, real names. We have Sir John Paul there. So congratulations to the top 10 quiz competition winners. So only goes to show that you were uh, very attentive during the discussion earlier. Okay, so I hope you are still tuned in to our webinar. So there, congratulations, top 10. So we have 10 winners for today's quiz competition winners. All right, so 
as always, uh, the top 10 will receive certificates, of course, for winning the quiz competition. So all 10 will receive certificates, e-certificates. So again, congratulations to everyone who took part in our quiz. All right. So I hope uh, we are still tuned in. In to our webinar and just a reminder so um, make sure that you are enrolled to this webinar if you are looking forward into getting an e-certificate all right so go to eduigp.com look for the webinar topic for today and just click on enroll and then the code, of course, for claiming your e-certificate will be posted during this webinar. So please stay with us until the end. Okay. All right. So it seems that everyone is still active. So at this point of uh, our webinar, I would like to ask you, our dear and active participants, to type in your questions on the comment box and... Uh, we will bring in again our brilliant speaker for today's webinar. This is Jasmine Dursethi to answer any questions that you might have about her discussion earlier. So this is the time you can ask questions. All right, so welcome to our question and answer session. And we're bringing in again, Mrs. Jasvinder Safi to answer any questions that you might have. So, for questions. All right, for our first question. All right, Mrs. Jasvinder. So the question is coming from Sir Farooz Akbarov. So while education is being redefined, many lack necessary know-how and hence it is a challenge to bring them on the same page so how do we bridge the gap between those who are at the forefront of education and those who fall behind is it ever possible to get everyone in tune with the latest development ma'am I think we are having a connection issue. All right, so um, we're just waiting for Mrs. Uh, Chesvinder City. Hello, ma'am. And So again, the question is, uh, while well, education is being redefined, many lack a necessary know-how. And uh, this is a reality, and it's still a challenge to bring them on on the same page. So how do we bridge this gap? Go ahead, ma'am. So yeah, it's a big, big uh, difficulty process that uh, those who are unable to uh, take those classes in that, that case we classes can be given but so that 
till then that classes extra classes can be continued we can come forward so all right so i think uh we are having or our speaker is having a technical uh, issue so uh, in the meantime kindly comment your questions on the comment box so uh, we will try to get your question to our speaker for today so if there are any gray areas about the discussion earlier on uh, and vocational education just type them in on the comment box and uh, we will um, direct your question to our brilliant speaker so again i hope um, everyone is still tuning in with us don't forget to share this live webinar on your uh, facebook uh, account tag your friends your co-workers you may mention them on the comment box as well and i think we have the again with us i'm very we sorry because that we are left yeah yeah i am having i'm facing uh, network issues so i'm very very sorry so i was saying that yes it is uh, possible to bridge the gap between those who are at the forefront of education and those at the uh, fall behind for that i would suggest a remedy to it is that we can give extra classes to them if it is a point of awareness can be created we can if financial problem is that certain ngos and certain uh government policies can take place and then that gap can be rebuilt for uh, people uh, who are not tuned for uh, as far as the latest development in education is concerned certain capacity building programs awareness camps among the students teachers and other stakeholders if uh, those are connected and i think this uh, institute of global professionals is doing a wonderful job at their end that internationally uh, they are acquainting people they are making people aware that what is going all around the world so in education i think this is uh, such kind of steps can definitely change and uh, we can make the use of the technology as i said that it is a time to think right to make right decisions and to make the uh, this opportunity to have a positive mindset and to make the best of this opportunity that uh, we can definitely make people aware and make them in tune with the latest development so as an educationist i think if we are able to uh, deliver this even if to uh, one person in our life i think we have contributed to the society that teacher is going to train or make aware many many people uh, so i think yes we can do it it is a gradual uh -huh. process because changes happen uh, gradually all of a sudden we cannot but yes gradually we are always putting continuous effort definitely we will do we have a question from Ar arnaba chatterjee she says respect me can you please give some details about cc content comprehensive education enacted by rte 2009 uh, ma'am i um, rte 2009 right to education according to it it was a uh, I think that uh, there has to be continuous education delivery of the students. The students have to be assessed continuously. For that, uh, in 2009, I think, yeah, uh, there was a assessment system where FAs and SA uh, assessment system was uh, uh, was given by the uh, CBSC, where we had to uh, take uh, objective kind of assessment. Of the students and then uh, subjective assessment was also a part of uh, that assessment criteria which was considered as continuous comprehensive education and apart from that uh, activity based uh, learning was happening because students were being involved in certain activities skill development was being taken care of projects were also given there so i think uh, the nep 2020 
in some or the other way it is again uh, more or uh, less the foundation is of 2009 only maybe the terminology is uh, a bit changed so uh, it's an uh, advancement of 2009 only so i hope uh, i'm being able to answer your uh, question madam yes. Chatterjee. definitely yes. very well explained so another question our educational system is losing its relevance even before the pandemic so how can we teach teachers and lead vocational training how can vocational education access equity and equality be improved to solve the global education crisis ma'am yeah a very valid question and i think this is the need of the r2 uh with the commercialization of education i whatever i'm saying at this forum it is just my mindset so if uh, if something goes wrong kindly excuse me for that because this is only how i think so i'm answering according to my own self so uh what i perceive that is and that's out of experience only i'm saying so uh the question yeah ma'am oligo you have asked that uh, you are very right that the educational system is losing its relevance even before the pandemic what i believe is because i have been in education sector since last 28 years so i think i have uh, uh, i have spent pretty good time in education sector and i would say that because of the commercialization of education is one factor that uh, only the financial things were at priority whereas as a facilitator or as or as a teacher our uh, prime motive should be to educate children and to build uh, certain values and skills in the child apart from the knowledge delivery which we somewhere somewhere how we fail to second question that is i, I, I agree to you and the second part you said how can teachers unleash the potential of vocational training as i said that uh, we have been listening much about learn and earn about concept and even in my session i had continuously talking about continues that thirst that uh, quest for knowledge thirst for knowledge thirst for learning if you have that and if you are aware that that professional vocational training is so important and if you want to be in your job there is no way out you will have to get yourself trained whether it be a vocational training you have to be an expertise of that particular whatever is your choice it it is not necessarily we you have to take up carpentry you have to take a plumbing or something etc etc but you may be a good artist you may be a good drawing teacher and then now you have to integrate that art whatever you are interested you have to have a positive set of mind that it is giving you an opportunity to integrate your interest into your academics and it is going to also help you to create children create students of that interest who will be again valuing and you will also be helpful in changing the mindset of the society and considering vocational education no less but a requirement which is going to make children uh, uh, successful in their life so and uh, of course if one is successful if one can make his or her living uh, in a better and an uh, better way so i think it is uh, it, it is of course teachers can only one way is work 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 there is no short, shortcut uh, you will have to work extra if you have to uh, have things extra you have to work extra that is only the way how can vocational education access equity and equality be improved to solve the global education crisis again i would say that there is a dire need see with the advancement of technology the world has shrunken the globe has shrunken now when the globe has shrunken i would say that there is much of transparency in any kind of education system in one corner of the world in the another corner we know what practices are going in philippines what they are doing and what we are doing in india so when such programs which are being organized by institute of global uh, professions i think uh, there has to be and this is an excess you are having what is going on in india there will be equity and equality and uh, definitely the quality of education all over the globe will be improved 
very well explained, uh, Mrs. Siti. And thank you, Ma'am uh, Oligo, for your question. And from Sir Randy Abueza, what are the best practices in your country to encourage more students to get enrolled in vocational school? See, uh, as I said, that uh, since last decade, there has been unemployment because uh, the employ unemployment has the number has increased and there is globally there is a demand for skill development when we say skill development skill workers that means vocational education so uh, because of that as i will only say that currently we were we earlier we were having uh, uh, polytechnical colleges separate colleges for skill development of course, in some schools and colleges also, there were vocational training uh, colleges were there. But now, uh, even at school level, even right from grade six, skill development has become, a, it has been integrated with the academic knowledge, which will be delivered to the students. And I think with this, uh, the scenario will change. And this, we will have more of skilled workers with us in the next five to 10 years. Exactly. All right. So thank you, ma'am, um, Siti, for uh, that answer. So we have uh, ma'am Dania Javed. How to train the teachers for giving vocational education in schools? As before redefining education, we have to train the teachers. Is it possible or, uh, or on real grounds? See, this is, uh, again, a mindset. First of all, see, there are, there is management. There is a leader that is the principal. If I'm talking in a school, there is management, there is principal, there are students, parents, all stakeholders. We need to have a mindset that yes, vocational education is only a source of earning. For any anything, you may choose any profession. That profession requires a certain skill in it. So unless you are convinced first with it, only then as a management, you will train your teachers for vocational education in the schools. And teachers who are already trained in vocational colleges, because there are certain vocational colleges all across the globe. So you can hire those trained teachers, vocational trained teachers in your schools, and then you can start on with the vocational skills. If that is, if if it is expensive that way, then what you can do is, like people in your country or in India, if there is some poetry work going on in my, near to my school, I will definitely call that skilled person who is an expert in his work and he can definitely train our school children because we ultim and the teachers will also learn and they because they are educated, they can create parameters on which the children can be assessed. So it is again your mindset. If you really want to do things, you will definitely create, uh, you will uh, create uh, a scenario where there is teaching and learning, both the things happen. As before redefining education, we have to train the teachers. Is it possible? Yes. That training of the teachers is a continuous process. When we want our children to be globally competent, you cannot leave your teachers unless and until your teachers are globally competent. You can never create students competent at global level. So that teachers training is a continuous process. Correct. And may I just share, ma'am? I mean, I'm, in my country, you can only teach vocational courses if you have a national certificate for a specific skill. Yeah. So uh, that that was so, to um, develop um, skills. Um, even in yes, India, so avoid, you know, spending. Yes, go ahead, ma'am. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's okay. Even in India, we have skilled teachers. If we are to teach in a school, we will have to do B.Ed. We will have to do M.Ed for teaching. That is a skilled course. So, if somebody wants to do, uh, uh, want to have become an event management, so he will have to take up that course in polytechnic college. If somebody wants to do gardening, somebody wants to become a beauty. Uh, technician so there are different courses different colleges are giving you have to take that course and then you will be uh, you can get an employment in any of the educational organization who are 
of course giving those uh, vocational courses how can we teach globally while acting locally so uh, this is uh, one of the uh, trend i would say uh, which is the current uh, current trend in the educational sector and the question is very valid i think i am in india and uh, cardens is uh, molinida i i hope i am uh, pronouncing your name correctly rishel correct uh, that rishel molinida that uh, uh, you you i am in india you are somewhere else i don't know which, which country you are sitting i think this is uh, whatever i am saying you are trying to understand what i am saying and maybe you are going to pick up one thing from what i said that is being local you are acting you are uh, being taught globally so this is i think the beauty of what you are asking me i right, think it can happen All right, from Ma'am Carol Cepillo, what would be the approach uh, of the government and stakeholders to intensify quality education and valuable skills that learners should acquire? A valid question again. Uh, governments, a uh, number of times what happens, the governments are making policies. And the uh, stakeholders, again, I would say to this very question is that if you want to intensify quality education, and you want the stakeholders to uh, be connected then what you can do is that whatever policies the government is making and what are the avenues for uh, a person with the vocational skills or uh, valuable skills he is having what will be the prospects of it we need to make people we need to make the stakeholders aware of those uh, valuable things and the prospects only then Uh, our uh, learners will be ready to learn whatever is being taught to them so uh, this is only the way how they can acquire we need to create mindset first so unless and until that uh, mindset for learning is not there we won't be able to do it all right so again i thank you ma'am sepilia for your question and um ma'am uh, siti Uh, on behalf of the IGP family, we would like to thank you again for your time and for sharing and imparting with us your knowledge and expertise um, in today's webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. All right. So for our dear um, participants, uh, please note that daily we issue um, three types of certificates. All right. So one is a lifetime membership certificate. Uh, only one in uh, every session. So again, to get this, um, you have to enroll in the webinar. And then another certificate as well for the quiz completion. So the top 10 earlier, uh, the top 10 winners already received their certificates. It's been uh, posted already on our page. All right, so congratulations again. And then another certificate, which is the free international web webinar certificates. And that is for all active participants. All right, so again, you can receive three types of certificates by just attending one session. So I hope that you are still tuned in. And uh, for an announcement, so from 1st of August, so starting 1st of August, we have a free with a webinar not just a webinar but international webinar daily all right so um it is going to be aired at 6 p.m fixed and it is around eight o'clock um in the evening here in the philippines so wow so starting from august 1st again we are going to have a free international webinar daily so just Attending one session, you can get three certificates, and uh, there will be a double bonus. So from September, we will arrange free international webinars on weekend, so that's a Sunday, and uh, morning sessions. So that's um, going to be aired at 9.30 a.m., and that will start today, which is September 1st. And during our morning sessions, um, it's going to be for three hours, more or less three hours. So I hope that you will join us 
on our morning sessions every Sunday. And of course, if we have double bonus, we have triple bonus. So from October, which is a month from now, we will start a webinar series program. You will get individual certificates for each webinar. And after submitting all certificates, you will receive a webinar series certificate. So um, we have five parts or 10 part series um, now loading. Now, our webinars are highly focused on uh, different topics like teaching strategies. It could be about research, assessment, pedagogy, tools and techniques, professional development, communication skills. So all topics that will surely help each and every one of us um, succeed in our profession. So our first webinar series program for this triple bonus is going to be about authentic assessment in teaching and learning. So the part one is going to be on October 1st. The second part will be on October 4th. Part three is going to be on October 7th. Part four, October 10th. And part five, October 26th. So take note of uh, these dates for you to be um, reminded and for you not to miss this uh, triple bonus from IGP. All right. So certificate code, uh, just reminders, must uh, be from July 12 of uh, this year, 2021, which uh, is available in video sessions, uh, certification part. Now you have to remember that without the certificate code, that we will be showing you later on, no one is eligible for certificates. So you have to take note of the certificate code in each and every webinar that you attend with IGP. Now, third reminder, video will be available always on our Facebook page, website, and YouTube channel. So if you missed an episode or a session, you can always go back to uh, our Facebook page, website, and YouTube channel, and still get your certificates. Now, who wants to learn? Uh, anyone can join us on our live sessions, or you may watch the pre-recorded sessions. And we don't have any restrictions for learning. So we don't choose who our learners or attendees are going to be, because our only focus is that we learn, or you learn anything that you want but uh, of course learning is a must and uh, let me uh, share with you a saying so the beautiful thing about learning is nobody can take it away from you which is true it is something that cannot be taken or robbed from you so let us all continue learning virtually in this time of pandemic even though we're not together face to face but we can still learn together virtually all right. So another announcement. So uh, this is coming soon. Uh, for the first time in IGP, we will launch a virtual award ceremony program. So I am pretty sure that you're all excited um, for this announcement. So just visit our website at www.eduigp.com for updates about this um, exciting announcement. So again, we will launch a virtual award ceremony program, of course, to honor your, um, yeah, to, to, to honor your hard work for, for tuning in with us and for learning with us. So as a way of th saying thank you to everyone who participated. And uh, September 15th, take note of the date, we will publish our Android apps or applications. You can do everything from that app. So again, visit our website, eduigp.com, because well, we will be posting updates about this great, great announcement. So Android apps will soon be available.
And also on the same date, we will launch quiz competition tab with 200 plus quizzes on our website. Again, that's eduigp.com. And that's uh, with certificates for all. So anyone can join at any time. So um, yeah, we are uh, looking forward to this on September 15th. So again, starting September 15th, we are going to have a quiz competition tab on our website. That's 200 plus quizzes. And you can gain, uh, gain certificates for taking these quizzes. And August 7th, you will get class material. All right, so we have a diploma certificate announcement as well. So after checking your activity and your submitted certificate, if you qualified, we will upload your diploma certificate on our website. So you just have to download, download it from our website. Again, that's eduigp.com after the 5th of September. So after the 5th of September, you can already start um, downloading your diploma certificate uh, if you qualify. So we still have to check your activity and of course your certificates. Take note, September 5th. All right, so are you looking for an opportunity to work with IGP internationally? So uh, are you looking for a chance to be part of the IGP family? So who are interested? All right, so if you're interested and if you feel confident to work with IGP as an international organizing committee board member, you are very much welcome to join the IGP family. All right, so who among you are interested, just comment your name in the comment box. So if you feel you're confident, comment your name on the comment box. And we are also now open for country director and country coordinator. So if you feel like um, you can be a country director or a country coordinator, you may apply now. Now the link for the application is in the comment box and pinned comments. So if you're interested to be a country director and country coordinator, please click on the link found in your comment box. Any more announcements? All right. So just like myself, so um, we are looking for some volunteers. So if you wish to volunteer as a host, so this is open for IGP uh, global viewers. So you can be an IGP global volunteer as a host. So you may contact us directly via our Facebook page or you may also send a message and express your interest on our WhatsApp. And the number is on your screen. It's 880-184-304-6324. So if you're interested and if you have questions on how to become a host, just go to message us on Facebook and on our WhatsApp. And if you're also interested to be our quiz maker, a quiz maker position, so we only need um, five. So you may also do the same. You may either message us on our Facebook page or send a message on our WhatsApp. So message us and become volunteers for IGP. And also on September 5th, mark your calendar. We are going to have a special surprise for all of you. So we can't really divulge any information as of the moment, but tune in, especially on September 5th, because again, we have a special surprise for you, our dear and active participants of IGP International Webinars. All right. so. We've been having issues in the past, but we are happy to announce that we don't have any traffic issues on our website anymore. 
So thank you for your patience. Um, we already did something about it, and we're happy to announce that right now, you are not going to encounter any more traffic issues every time you visit our website. So thank you all for bringing this to our attention, and we are happy to um, correct and do something about it. So thank you all for your patience and for your understanding. And due to some of the membership data missing, we stopped our membership process for a few days. And we, we are very much sorry if you uh, applied or sent your uh, membership data. But don't you worry, we will be back again for membership with full support starting the 16th of September. Rest assured that uh, we will process your membership starting the 16th of September. And this month of September um, is a very important month for IGP. So we will be uh, visible uh, within this month. There will be quizzes, awards, new website, mobile app, and many, many more. So we want uh, your uh, mental support. So we really need your support for us to be able to continue um, this webinar and uh, yeah, so just uh, wait for further announcements because there will be more quizzes, more awards, more certificates, and there's more to come for all of you. And that is because of your support. So please support us some more. Give us your support because we really need it for us to continue this endeavor and to serve all of you because we always care about uh, your will wishes. But you know that this one is a pure nonprofit organization. So we, we don't make money out of our webinars. So um, we're not able to do all the things within less time. Uh, we are sorry again. So if we um, have not processed any requests in a timely manner, uh, please understand that we don't make a profit out of this. Uh, we, we are here to, to help you and uh, to give you all the learnings and uh, and everything for free. So please understand us if we can process um, requests in a timely manner. So again, support and understanding. Uh, we need it. Any more announcements? Okay, so here is the certification process, um, step by step. I hope you are still too and then so on september 1st which is today so again let me remind you that you have to enroll the webinar which is entitled redefining education so if you want to receive a certificate for today's webinar so just look for redefining education as the title now the link to your certificate is now available in the comment box And the certification link will be always available in this program post. So now you can claim your certificate in two ways. One is uh, there's a direct link from the comment box, like I mentioned, or you may also go directly to our website, with this, which is www.eduigp.com for all information. Now, again, you have to find today's program or today's webinar and the process is just the same. So I hope that you're enrolled to our webinar for you to get your e-certificate. So take note of the ways that you can claim your e-certificate. I guess everyone is waiting for the code. Are you all excited to get your e-certificate? All right, so um, to all of you, 
our ever active participants and uh, knowledge seekers. Uh, I would uh, love to thank you. Uh, I would uh, love to thank you. Yes, hello. Yes, hello. I would like to thank um, so like to think, participants, um, participants, our dear participants, our dear participants from, from the bottom of my heart for attending today's session. I know that all of you have learned something new and useful in your profession. Your profession. And I hope that you learned uh, something yeah, and up on this learning. Uh, now, for those who are excited so uh, to know excited. about today's certificate know, code, uh, Please take note code, of your certificate code for today's your webinar. Code for today's web it is I four 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 one. Sir Paul, am I audible? Sir Paul, am I audible? Again, the certificate code is yeah, IGP four four one one. Hello, Sir Paul. Sir Paul, can you hear me? Am I audible? Am I audible? So I'm giving you time to take note of I'm our time to take note certificate, of our code. certificate code. Hello, dear participants. Uh, am I audible to you? I think uh, Sir Paul is not interacting with me. Am I audible to you? Uh, please write in the comment section, then I can interact. Hello, ma'am Marisha. Okay. Okay, sorry, participants. Actually, uh, I moderated from my end, but just now I got this connection with my laptop and already it's an electric electricity issue. So that's why uh, our complete screen is uh, vanished. Right now, for today's program, the code is for certification IGP4411. So this is the code for certification. So you can claim your certificate with that code. And again, sorry for inconvenience because uh, I lost my electricity right now. So that's the way, uh, that's the reason I'm not able to share uh, presentation. So this is the code, IGP4411. With this code, you can claim your certificate easily. So that's IGP. So that's IGP. E441. So you can you can claim your certificate with this code IGP four four one one and already link in the comment section also in pin comment so you can collect the link you can click on the link or if you are not able to click on link so you can browse directly www.edugp.com and uh, we don't have any traffic issue in our website so no problem you can you can claim your certificate anytime. So again, thank you and see you tomorrow with our next program. Sir Paul, if you if you hear, able to hear me, then you can continue and you can uh, end the session. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So again, to all of you who are ever active for participants and uh, knowledge seekers. I would uh, like to thank all of you from uh, the bottom of my heart for attending today's session. And I know that all of you have learned something new and useful to your profession. And I hope that you will apply all these learnings in your life. And always remember, knowledge without application is simply knowledge. Applying the knowledge to one's life is wisdom. So once again, thank you everyone for joining us in today's webinar. And it has been a pleasure and honor being your host for today. And I hope to see you all again in the near future. And I hope that after this pandemic, we can have um, the opportunity to be in a physical venue where we can learn together and see each other face to face. But in the meantime, let us all continue to learn virtually through the Institute of Global Professions international webinars our appreciation and gratitude to the institute of global professionals 
by leaving a review and recommending our page and of course our webinars. So don't forget again to collect your e-certificate for today's webinar. Don't forget to enroll uh, to this webinar. So again, our topic for today is redefining education. Just look for the topic and enroll. So you may go to our website, www.eduigp.com and click enroll or click the link found on our Facebook post. So don't forget to key in the code that we showed you earlier. So I hope I've given you enough time to write down the code. So if you missed today's webinar, don't worry, you can still watch the webinar and still get your e-certificate. And you may collect as many certificates as you want. So just enroll to the webinars. And don't forget to take note of the code in each and uh, every of our webinars. All right. So before, um, all right. So again, I hope you were able to take note of the codes. Okay, so if you were able to take note of your codes, um, I guess um, this has been your host for today's webinar. Again, this is Mr. Paul Martin Sir, de Paul, And thank you again I'm back for joining again. us. <laughs> Sir, Paul, I'm back again with my electricity, so no problem. I'm here. All right, so write down the code IGP4411. Thank you guys for joining us in today's webinar, and I hope you learned something. Thank you for having me, IGP. And hope to see you all again in the next webinar.